Ni hao nyang, hello, I am the Dark Fairy, and welcome back to Confessions of a First Time Dungeon Master. We're here today with session 14. If you have not seen session 13, I will as always put a link up to that, nope, it's this hair, uh, up to that up here. Um, this one might be a bit of a longer one, so let's get into it. Okay, so for session 14, um, I'm going to start this time with what I prepped, because I prepped quite a bit and this prep was actually kind of fun mostly because focusing more on like final boss encounter kind of thing um but so i kind of started off with that because i know who these three marsh keepers that the party is looking for like i know who they are what they are what their motivations are and all of that as well as kind of like where their lair is so um i kind of prepped um i prepped kind of like a base sort of travel or like mechanic for their um for their kind of like abode to be revealed to the party and then I did a lot of encounter prepping which is always fun um not going to spoil too much since they haven't gotten to that encounter yet um but got to play around for the first time with like lair actions and potentially legendary actions um, so that's pretty fun, mostly either taking kind of from examples from the Monster Manual or Volo's Guide to Monsters, or kind of coming up with similar effects um, based upon like the, like the swampy kind of environment and like the, the three sisters' nature. Um, so that was a lot of fun, and I kind of, I've, <laughs> too early, but I prepped like kind of an encounter sheet for, to help me keep track of um, things like spells and the, le the legendary actions and all of that, um, and as well as each of their, like, actions, bonus reactions, and reactions, just to help me keep it straight if it comes to combat. Again, it might not come to combat. I kind of hope it will, but I could definitely see my players being very, like, we don't want to fight them, because, as always, they are very careful of, of potential situations where they could die, um, so we'll see how that goes, but anyways, um, so I prepped that encounter, which was the majority of it and a lot of fun, and then I kind of had to go back and prep the, like, interim stuff, which I knew, like, they were going to be focused on, so, um, I did a little bit of that, I did a little bit more of, like, the fleshing out of the city of Flernissa, I suppose, the the swamp city that they're in so uh, I introduced like a couple families that might have information for about these marsh keepers um and then okay I'll I'll come to that when I start the recap um and then I also came up with like an additional little thing add-on kind of with Chari so now getting into the recap um they started off in the morning and kind of split up into groups as they are want to do um to cover more ground um so i think it was morgal morgal and ivar they first go and pick up the skull and we retconned it a little bit so that like this happened kind of earlier in the earlier in the morning um so they pick up the skull from the tannery and then on their way back kind of um, they spy, or they f see Chari. Chari, the fearbog, like, little girl from Ristmore who first brought them to the little village. Um, she's going around, like, asking anyone if they've seen her brother, um, because her brother was supposedly here in Flernissa, um, two days ago, kind of when the party arrived in Ristmore and should have been back by now. Um, and so when she sees the two of them, she's like, oh, fami like, familiar faces. It's like, oh, can you help me find my brother? Uh, he's missing. He was supposed to be back soon. Um, and so they kind of, like, pick her up and take her with them um, to kind of ask around the city. Um, and then, let's see. Um, on the other side, Tyrol and Umrik, they went to go kind of to the central call it a temple, I suppose. It's kind of like the central building where they have all of their, like, communal gatherings and can go to worship and stuff like that. Um, so they kind of go there to see if there's anyone 
like anyone to talk to who might know anything about the keepers um they end up running into the elder of the of Thornissa, like the leader um Sinmira Moss uh, the Moss family rules Thornissa, um and they find out some information which is the the marsh keepers they mostly kind of like call upon um like two main families i suppose in Thornissa, and they really only appear when either they need something or like to warn people of um, any impending danger. Um, they do occasionally visit Furnessa once in a while, um, usually one on one, not like all three of them together. But like they're pretty revered within both like the White Cancel Marshes, um, and the people tend to like flock to them and be like, um, and think of them like almost as uh, like approaching sainthood for Melispa, goddess of wild nature. Um, and so, basically, it gave them two families, um, the Nettles, who is like, who are, like, the warrior tribe of Lernissa, and then the Laburnum family, who is, um, a little more, like, secluded, and they live in, like, a manor down to the south. So that's kind of the information that they got. Um, and then with Valhiri and Basil, and eventually, um, Morgal and Ivar, they meet up together with Chari, they go and... They glean some information from the innkeeper about kind of the same two families. So they go and talk to the nettles. Um, the nettles kind of have outposts al- around like the circumference of Thurnissa to keep watch and um, be able to kind of protect the city from all sides. But um, so they kind of travel around and eventually they meet at their like main compound in the west um, and meet with the leader or the head of the house, kind of, uh, Galamede Nettles. And um, then they kind of relay some of the information. They also mention that they're looking for Chari's brother, Havian. And um, they get some information that about like the Labyrinth family, how um, Galamede, he's not too keen, kind of, on what the Labyrinth, and like how the Labyrinth family has kind of changed, like in service to these marsh keepers, they've become more like secluded and kind of started to like draw away from the uh, ways of the the tribes and the city. And then um, he says that he mentions that they're almost like a bit fanatical, and that they're the ones who believe that um, who like revere the marsh keepers to the extent that they could should ascend to sainthood, which is like not common in this era. Um, and then he also mentions that, because I wanted to give them a little bit of warning or like a bit of a hint that these marsh keepers might not necessarily be like the good protectors that they seem to be. So Galamede, he kind of has his doubts about them, despite the fact that they've come to his family occasionally to kind of warn of any beasts or um, approaching hazards, stuff like that. But he has his own insight. There's something kind of off about them that he doesn't quite trust. Um, Because I feel like up until now, even with like some of like the tiny hints I've dropped, I've done, I think, a pretty good job with making it seem like the Marsh Keepers are... Um, like, have the interest of the swamp and of the people of Thurnissa and, like, people of the swamps in general, um, like, their best interests at heart. And, like, I haven't really given that many cause, that much cause to, like, have them be seen as, like, evil or sinister or bad guys or anything like that. So, um, I won't tell you what, what they are yet. You can maybe guess. Let me know if you can guess down in the comments below. But, um, so I gave them a little bit of information like that. And then, therefore, um, then it kind of sent them to go visit the Labyrinth family after kind of promising to check around if there's any news of Charity's brother and also to like, send a message back to Wrist more, um, to say that Charity is fine and safe because she kind of wandered here alone because... She was um, afraid for her brother and just wanted to get him back because she's like the cutest little fur bog. Anyways, um, okay, so 
afterwards they go and visit the Labradum family. And uh, it's when they were kind of meeting with the nettle with Galamede that I noticed this, and that's the fact that I tend to only provide like certain sources of information, I think, even if they go looking for different different things. Although now that I'm thinking about that, maybe that's not entirely true. It's just whether or not in the moment I'm like, I feel like I'm prepped enough or like um, I can think on my feet quickly enough to like give them something. But because I feel like they went to one source and I told them about the Nettle family and the Labyrinth family. And then they went to another source and then I told them about like the Nettle family and the Labyrinth family. Um, I think part of that is me. I kind of want to keep some of it contained so that the investigation like doesn't go on for like too long or like longer than is really necessary because there's only like so much information that you can find or you can get and I feel like just like adding in like so many like extra details that might not be that relevant or like that um helpful like just is a bit of a waste of time and kind of given the the size of our party and um just kind of our cadence I guess I kind of have been trying to edit this out but occasionally I think I will kind of come up with some random kind of lore like I did for the Lake of Illyria and like the stories that they investigated back at the keep so maybe it's not too bad I just need to maybe tweak some details a little bit to make it seem worthwhile that they split up. Anyways, so on to the Labyrinth family. So Labyrinths, which I remember from reading uh, Redwall stories as a kid, um, they're this uh, flowering tree. It's very beautiful, but um, with these like yellow flowers, but I remember that the flower and like the stem and the leaves, I think, are all poisonous. So it's kind of like a disguised uh, a deadly, um, beautiful thing. And I kind of wanted that to be sort of what the Labyrinth family was kind of about. They're, like, on the surface, they're, like, normal swamp citizens, but then underneath there's something a little bit off, a little bit more dangerous about them. So the Labyrinth family, they are kind of working in service to the Marsh Keepers, um, they did not do as much investigating with the mar- with this family, I would say, that they could have. There was definitely a lot more that they could have found out. Um, really, their plan was they kind of just, they pretended that Valkyrie, our druid, was kind of like the fourth sister in this and that she um, cares very much about nature, which is true, and um, kind of has business to talk with the three sisters about, the three marsh keepers about. Um, So eventually they kind of talk their way in. Valkyrie and um, Basil enter. Basil's kind of a bodyguard while the rest of them kind of wait in the foyer because these people are not very welcoming. Um, And the leader of the house, his name is Wolgan, he kind of um, takes them to um, a kind of like a room just to receive guests and then they have a very kind of tense conversation and I think this conversation went over pretty well um just like kind of role play wise um I think people were kind of getting into it um basically here they were trying to leverage like a way to bring the marsh keepers here to contact the marsh keepers um saying that they like had business and protecting the swamp and all that had some mildly veiled like threats with like um, and if something were to happen to you, do you think the Marsh Keepers would care then? Um, but the Labyrinth family, they're a fiercely loyal and kind of like fanatical, like not quite right in the head. And then they don't actually have a way of like summoning the Marsh Keepers to them. They have to go to the Keepers if they want anything. So like I kind of couldn't give them away to bring the marsh keepers to them um but I think one thing here is I think 
I need to work on a little bit on like allowing my players' um, dialogue and like what they say and are trying to persuade them to do to affect the dialogue a little bit more. I find that I stay a little bit kind of stuck in like this is what the mindset of this person is and like even if they roll persuasion sometimes it, it doesn't to me it doesn't feel like what they say is necessarily enough to change their mind if that makes sense so maybe I need to be better about asking for persuasion rules but um yeah it maybe felt I wonder if it maybe felt a little bit like fruitless for my players but I eventually I also had planned um that there is like a, a betrayer sort of in the labyrinth family um and I did mess up here because Mylis, who is like the woman who um like beckons to them and like uh, wants to tell them something in secret. She should have dropped a certain piece of information that I forgot in the like, kind of the moment but basically she She betrays her family because she like no longer can agree with what they are doing um, and like certain crimes that they've committed that she just can't agree with one of them including kidnapping a child which is what I should have said and then I t just forgot about it because he being but um so basically she tells them that the marsh keepers are not as like benevolent as they appear to be and um says that there's no way to bring them to us but like you can go to them and it's basically she gives them a silver bell and tells them to follow head south and follow the dancing lights and after that she kind of disappears because she doesn't want to be caught um so vague instructions is they're meant to be vague and then that's kind of how they find out um, and so then that's kind of where they figure they should head um and that's a see um after that they exit the house and um one of galamede's uh, bird messengers kind of gives them a message that havian um charity's brother the fear book um was spotted together with one of the labyrinth families members like um near like the southwest outpost so then they decide um, to kind of group group back up and uh, head out to the swamp, I think, because I think they're trying to not get too sidetracked with the Havian thing, but, um, yeah, I think that's, and then that's about where we left off. So, few things um with the labyrinth family and they still have potential maybe to find this out um if they decide to kind of do some more investigating before heading down south um the labyrinth family is working for the marsh keepers and they could find definitely like very um what is the word not indicative but they could catch them red-handed, like, um, being involved in, like, the very thing that they're investigating, like, this mushroom and this poison, um, so we'll see if they decide to go back and investigate that or investigate that, um, like, the lead about Havian. I don't know how invested they are or if they just want to go down and, um, go down and confront the three marsh keepers. That'll be interesting. Um, but, like, I don't really have much to prep for next time because I've already prepped kind of everything to do with these keepers. And, like, pretty much I've got, like, swamp travel down and stuff like that. And I think anything else that they want to prep would be, like, not too bad to kind of come up with on the spot. So, yeah. This was, this was definitely a fun session to prep for. Definitely... Um, noticing like a few things that I can improve on either in like roleplay and like um, when 
they're having like serious conversations and trying to persuade people, I think I need to be a bit more lenient with that. And um, kind of let their persuasion and or deception or whatever work when they roll well. But um, yeah, those are like, that was like the main takeaway. That one and then the whole like not giving them enough sources of information and just like kind of repeating the same things to the players. I think that kind of sucks when they decide to split up, but it's also like, it's also sometimes difficult just to prep that much because um, if they split up like three and three or two, 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 then it's like twice, two times or three times the amount of um, like information or NPCs or something like that to to prepare. So sometimes I don't have the time for it or I'm just lazy or um, I feel like it's not really helpful. So um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you are enjoying the campaign and are following along. Um, leave a comment down below if you can guess what my final encounter is and whether or not my players will somehow derail it and turn it into a not final encounter. But um, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content and I will see you in the next one. Bye!